There were some incredible games that came out this year. Some might say this is one of the best years for video games ever, especially for JRPG fans. It felt almost as if every other week we got an incredibly anticipated release, or at least news of one coming out soon. In the year of 2023, I started actively focusing on this YouTube channel, and during that time, I played 42 games. So I was quite busy getting all that gaming in. Anyways, of those 42 games, which ones came out on top in the end? Well, that's what I'm here to talk about today. It was incredibly difficult to narrow my list down to only 10 games, but after painstakingly frustrating eliminations, I am ready to share with you what I would consider my top 10 games played in 2023. Just a heads up, while most of these games were released in 2023, there might be a few surprises of games that I pulled out of the backlog. Before we get into it, tell me, what are the best games you played in 2023? I'd love to hear it. Anyways, let's get this list of 2023 bangers on the way. Let's go! Okay, to start off this list... Um, better. We have Theater Rhythm, Final Bar Line. Theater Rhythm is purely a rhythm-based fan service game for fans of the Final Fantasy series. And I spent more time than I want to admit just chilling to the music and entering that state of relaxation and nostalgia. Theater Rhythm Final Bar Line includes music from every Final Fantasy game, not only the main number titles, but also music from side games such as Type-0, Dissidia, and even the mobile titles like Brave Exvius and Opera Omnia. In addition to Final Fantasy music, the game got three season passes throughout the year, which added even more songs from other great Square Enix franchises, such as Bravely Default, Mana, and even Nier. You can also create a party of four, consisting of almost any character through the Final Fantasy series, so it's entirely possible to create the dream team party you've always wanted. Theater Rhythm is just one of those games that sends you into a happy place. Whenever I played the game, it just made me smile with the combination of nostalgia and joy that I was overswept with. There is a huge catalogue of tracks. Without any DLC, the standard edition, you have 385 tracks to play along to. And if you buy the DLC, including the digital deluxe bonus tracks, that skyrockets the number of music to an insane grand total of 502 tracks. That being said, I was a little bit disappointed with the DLC choices. For example, I would have liked to have the Bravely DLC pack include the Vagrant of Love from Bravely Default. Still, Theater Rhythm Final Bar Line is a game that I can continue to see myself go back to for many years. As in my opinion, Final Fantasy music is timeless and it never gets old. The number 9 spot on my list goes to Dragon Quest VII. Fragments of the Forgotten Past for the 3DS. Alright, so at the beginning of 2023, I had decided that I was going to catch up on the Dragon Quest titles that I had not finished yet. Those titles were Dragon Quest VI, Dragon Quest VII, and Dragon Quest IX. I have tried to finish Dragon Quest VII many, many times in the past. While the game is great, it is long. And when I say long, I mean it is ridiculous. It is one of the longest single-player JRPGs in existence, so I had played the 3DS version, which had a lot of the game simplified in order to speed up the progression of the original, as it had severe pacing issues. As such, the 3DS version is shorter. However, it still took me 110 hours to finish. That was only the core story. I didn't really focus on any side quests, I just played through the story from beginning to end. Gameplay-wise, Dragon Quest VII is exactly what you'd expect from a Dragon Quest game. Typical turn-based JRPGs with a talk to every NPC to find out how to progress system, so on and so forth. Nothing new in that aspect, but the whole setting of the game is what made me enjoy it so much. The whole concept is that other than your initial island, the world is empty, and in order to restore the world, you have to go back in time, solve an issue that caused that island to vanish out of existence, and once solved, you go back to your main timeline, and then you visit the restored island to see the descendants of the people you helped. It seems somewhat basic, 
but it really gives a world building aspect that was never seen at that time, and to this day honestly has not been matched. The game just had a very good story, and I wish I had played it many years ago because it was an experience that I feel can't ever be replicated again. Also, job system. We all know how much I love my job systems. The number 8 spot on my list goes to Eternal Sonata. About 4 weeks ago, I did a full review on this game. A card should be showing up in the corner right now in case you want to check it out. Eternal Sonata is such a beautiful and depressing game. I had such an enjoyable time replaying this. I hadn't played it since it originally released on the Xbox 360, so it was really something... like, it was honestly a blast from the past for me. The idea of exploring a dream world of a dying composer is such an amazing concept for our world to explore. It was honestly surprising at how beautiful a game from 15 or so years ago can look in 2023. It has held up incredibly well, and it blows my mind that somehow this game has not seen a remaster yet. It was one of the first games I played on the 360 and PS3 generation, so this was a huge blast of nostalgia for me, despite the fact that I remembered nothing about it. The characters, the villains, the whole experience was just something that is so unique and has yet to be matched. I absolutely adored this game, and if you want to hear my in-depth thoughts, make sure to check out my full review. Play Eternal Sonata. It will change your standards on JRPGs forever. What? A non-JRPG on my list of best games in 2023? It's blasphemy. It's a crime. It's absolutely unheard of. No, it's number 7, which belongs to Metroid Prime Remastered. Yeah, I know, it's a remaster, so it's not a game I originally played in 2023, but the remaster of Metroid Prime is absolutely amazing. The original release of Metroid Prime on the GameCube was great, but the quality of life changes make it 10 times better. The game has several different control methods, which make it accessible for anyone. There are dual stick controls, which is standard for any modern day console shooter, pointer controls, somewhat akin to the Wii remaster of the game, classic controls, which mimic the GameCube control scheme, and a hybrid control scheme, which kind of combines the classic and the Wii control schemes. This game absolutely looks gorgeous. I have never seen a glow up like this. All the textures seem to have been redone, I'm not sure if they're actually redone, but they look phenomenal. I hope that Nintendo follows suit and does a Metroid Prime 2 and 3 remaster. Maybe eventually we'll actually get Metroid Prime 4. That game was announced in 2017, and we still have no information about it. Come on, Nintendo, I think we've waited long enough. I couldn't decide. So I had to give the whole collection of the Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters spot number 6 on my list. The Pixel Remasters got a PlayStation 4 and Switch release in 2023, and I know life them. I know a lot of people were complaining about these games because each of the Pixel Remasters were based on the originals, so they didn't include any of the new content like the extra bosses in Final Fantasy 1, the extra jobs in Final Fantasy 5, or the extra espers in Final Fantasy 6. While that content was fun, and it would have been nice to have it all included, but it's not a huge loss as far as I'm concerned, and it wasn't the goal of these games. These games are meant to replicate the original releases, and I saw a lot of complaints about the font Square Enix shows as well. Luckily, the console version gave a more pixelated font option, which is easier on the eyes. These games were such a blast of nostalgia, and I enjoy platinuming each pixel remaster. Yes, I know I showed you the case of the Switch version, but I have triple dipped on these games because they're so great. But anyways, personally, I think the best part of these games were the remastered soundtracks. Every game had the soundtracks redone and they are nothing short of amazing. Even so, if you prefer the original soundtracks, you had that option as well. The last and biggest change were all the multipliers added to each game. Each game outside of Final Fantasy II has the option to add multipliers to experience and guilt up to four times as well as shutting off encounters and later games in the series added ability points to the multipliers. Since Final Fantasy II didn't have experience, there are multipliers to ease leveling up of spells or stat growth. As some of these games are difficult, this is nice because the original releases were pretty grind heavy. These games were such a good time. I'd personally say that the Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters are the best way to experience the original Final Fantasy titles. 
can you believe it, of all the Tales games. This is the best one I played in 2023. Tales of Symphonia, Dawn of the New World. I know you guys are hating me for this right now. Is taking spot number five on my best played games in 2023. I know people absolutely despise this game and consider it the worst game in the Tales franchise, but I honestly really like it. I don't blame people for disliking it, but it's fun. The combat was kind of bland, but it introduced a fun new monster collection system, and it was neat seeing how each character developed from the original game. Even if the development seemed totally out of character, and every voice actor was different. The new characters were kind of bad. Emil is whiny and weak, and apologizes for absolutely everything. Sure, he saw his parents die right in front of his eyes, and I'm sure that would affect someone's personality, but not this extreme. And Marta is a creepy stalker, and is all, please love me, and don't even look at anybody else. Yeah, this game has its issues. It's still one of the most fun I played in 2023. Just the whole continuation of the story from the original Tales of Symphonia, somehow, I really enjoyed it. Even if it did butcher everything that Symphonia stands for. It's somehow a sequel that does all the wrong things, but somehow comes out as a great time. I know what you're thinking. Tears of the Kingdom only got place number four. What's wrong with you? You have a terrible opinion. Get out. Banned from YouTube. Hold on. Hear me out, though. I love this game, and I sunk 120 hours into it in a week's time. Truth be told, The Legend of Zelda Solve Every Puzzle with Bridges was an amazing time. I just prefer the original Zelda formula. I love full-length dungeons with unique items earned in said dungeons, and Tears of the Kingdom just doesn't have that. Sure, it has the attempted dungeons, but it just felt like jumbo shrines. Honestly, what I loved about Tears of the Kingdom though was the creativity and freedom the game gave you. You can build vehicles, motorized laser beam mobiles, and bridges. Oh, the bridges. Bridges can be used for everything, and I spent 90% of my time building bridges left and right out of all sorts of things. Sure, some of the creations can resort to frame rate issues, but for the most part, the performance was fine and didn't affect the enjoyment of the game. I've seen it all over the place. Tears of the Kingdom could have just been DLC for Breath of the Wild, but that would have been the largest piece of DLC in existence. There were too many change mechanics, the physics were easily updated for the better, and the story. Oh goodness, that story. Tears of the Kingdom had some absolutely amazing story, and I adored it. It was tear-jerking, and probably the best story to ever exist in a Zelda game. If you haven't played Tears of the Kingdom, you owe it to yourself to play this masterpiece, and it's a crime it didn't get Game of the Year at the Game Awards this year. Yeah, I know. I said I didn't care for Trails of Cold Steel in my Hot Takes video. But honestly, Cold Steel 4 was a great conclusion, which is why it gets number 3 on my list. Honestly, after over a thousand hours in the Trails universe, this was the perfect conclusion to Reen and Co's story. Yeah, I know Trails into Reverie exists, but that's more of a Crossbell 3 than a Cold Steel 5. Trails into Cold Steel 4, or Trails of Avengers Endgame as I've called it before, is nothing short of amazing. It features a total of 39 playable characters from Trails in the Sky all the way to Trails of Cold Steel. It's the perfect kind of fan service that I enjoy. However, the main reason this game gets such a high spot on my list is the amazing soundtrack. Trails of Cold Steel 4 probably has the best OST in the entire Trails series. So many of the tracks in this game hit so hard. Some examples of this are Wake Up the Enormous Dragon, Majestic War, Mystic Core, and To the Future. To the Future is by far one of my favorite themes. I've said so many positive things about Falcom Sound Team JDK's work, but I'd go ahead and say that Cold Steel 4 easily has their best work. It's no contest. Cold Steel 4 is amazing, but the music just puts it to another level. I'd even go ahead and say it makes the grind of the previous 8 games worth it. Absolutely beautiful. You know Final Fantasy 16 had to make a place on this list. But number 2? Yes, Final Fantasy 16 gets the number 2 spot. Final Fantasy 16 is a wonderful experience, and I will admit that I was initially skeptical about it. As it was an action RPG, and we all know how Final Fantasy XV turned out, even if I kinda liked it. 
This game initially got written off by a large part of the fan base due to it being action, when Final Fantasy has primarily been turn-based over the majority of the series. However, Final Fantasy XVI ended up having some absolutely beautiful gameplay. The combat flowed so well, and the icon fights are some of the most cinematically gorgeous fights I have ever experienced in any video games. Personally, the Titan fight had to be my all-time favorite. It honestly felt like it was on the scale of something from Shadow of the Colossus with the action of Ashura's Wrath, which is another game we need a remaster of. Come on Capcom, make it happen. It was breathtaking in all of the right ways. While the combat was wonderful, this game really shines with the story. The story is on another level. Final Fantasy XVI has to have one of the most beautiful and saddest stories to ever exist. I would say it's even competing with Eternal Sonata. Not only limited to the main story, but the side quests. There is a certain side quest of featuring your adorable little dog, Torgal, that absolutely broke me. Like, put down the game for 20 minutes to process what just happened. Don't worry, it's not a death or anything of anyone's fave little pupper, but it was about as emotional. Sure, it does have its shortcomings, like the fact that it includes a crafting system, I don't like crafting systems. And it leads to all of your side quest rewards being materials that you probably already have 300 of in your inventory. And the fact that you get side quest dumps that lead you to being in side quests for two to five hours, detaching you from the main story. But as a whole, it's a game I am glad to have near the top of my list. Before we hit the number one spot, I want to give Final Fantasy XIV an honorable mention. I started playing this game back in 2015, but I never really got into it. I never really got enthralled in the game because I was not big on MMOs and A Realm Reborn was just an incredible slog. I was playing a bard and I just didn't enjoy the gameplay. It was boring. I didn't see the point in paying for a sub month to month. However, back in September of this year, I went on a little visit to see some friends, saw Distant Worlds, which featured a lot of the music, and then I decided to give Final Fantasy XIV another chance. I changed my class to Rogue, and later on Ninja, and I was hooked. This new class had much more engaging gameplay. It was more of a direct DPS class as opposed to a support DPS class, and I haven't stopped playing it since. At the time of this recording, I am currently in the Stormblood patch quests, and I can't stop playing it. As someone who has sworn off MMOs for many, many years, I regret not getting into this game earlier. It's just one of the best games I've played in a long time. The small references to past Final Fantasy titles make me enjoy it even more. Take this as my suggestion, to never knock something before you give it a worthy shot. Final Fantasy XIV is an absolute blast. Easily one of the best Final Fantasy games I've played. The only reason it doesn't get a spot on this list is because I'm still making my way through the main story and I haven't finished it yet. Play Final Fantasy XIV and let it change your views on MMOs forever. What? An import on my number one spot? You know it. E's Memoirs, The Oath in Felghana is my number one spot. The Oath in Felghana on PSP was the first E's and the first Falcom game I ever played. To this day, it remains my favorite. This was actually one of the first titles I reviewed on this channel. A card should be popping up right now if you want to check out that review. Beware though, as it's one of my first reviews and I was still getting a feel for everything so it's a little bit rough. This is essentially a prettied up version of the PSP port with added features like a speed up mode, the option to change the music between the PC port of Oath and Felghana, which is the default, the PC8801 version, and the X68000 version of Ease 3. I have no idea how to pronounce those two consoles. As well as you can switch between either a new art style or the classic original art style. And of course this version has redone sprites and textures making it gorgeous. This game unfortunately doesn't have an English translation and it doesn't have any localization news yet, but at the very least I suggest you play the PC version of Oath and Felghana. It doesn't have any of those extras but it's still a great port. I'm holding out for a hope of a localization, and I would love if they gave E6 Ark of Napishtim the same treatment. This game will always have a place in my heart, and that's part of the reason I would consider it the best game I played in 2023. Well friends, that's it. Those are my top 10 games I played in 2023. Did you play any of these games? How do you feel about my list? Let me know in the comments below and tell me some of the best games you played in 2023. 
I'll be lurking around in the comments, so I'd love to get a discussion going. 2023 was an amazing year for gaming, and it doesn't appear to be slowing down in 2024. Here's to another great year in gaming. I can't wait to share some of my upcoming experiences with you. If you want to join me for another year of great gaming, make sure to hit that subscribe button, smash that thumbs up, and join me for more adventures. Thanks for tuning in, Happy New Year everybody, and have a wonderful day.